This is David Olshan of Nevada Legal Services. This is our second lesson in the YouTube Law School dealing with a complaint. And this section is going to be two parts. So this is the first one. The first page of your complaint should have the caption. In the upper left, there's identification in information regarding your name, address, phone number, email, and whether you're the petitioner or plaintiff. Uh, in the middle, you go, you're going to identify the court and back on the left, you're going to have your name as the plaintiff versus the defendant. Of course, a defendant has to be either a person or a corporation. And over on the right, you're going to have the case number and department number. You don't know that prior to filing, but you should leave that language there, those words there. The lesson we're trying to impart to you here is keep it simple. A complaint just needs a jurisdictional statement, or if the court already has jurisdiction, you don't need it. You're going to state why you are entitled to the relief, either money or order from the court, and then you're going to make a demand for money or an order. Of course, you can do both. Rule 8 of Nevada Rules of Civil Procedure and the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure and Rule 9 contain the pleading requirements, and you should go there if you have any questions, but keep it simple. A plain statement is good enough. You're not going to argue the law in your complaint. A dazzling complaint is not going to get you anywhere. It's not going to get you a victory or impress the judge. Don't make legal conclusions like the defendant is guilty, liable, or wrong. You're going to make allegations in your complaint. Don't include exhibits unless they're needed to establish jurisdiction or for, for some other important purpose. And again, you're not going to win your case by a dazzling complaint, so keep it simple. Here's a complaint for money owed, statement of jurisdiction if it's 15,000 or less in state justice court, that's where you're going to file it. If it's more than 15,000, you're going to file it in district court. The defendant owes a plaintiff X number of dollars according to the account set out in Exhibit A. We talked about exhibits. Include this exhibit if you're trying to establish your damages. That's going to be the account. Therefore, the plaintiff demands judgment against the defendant for X dollars plus interest and costs, you're going to date it and sign it, and that's your complaint. Again, you're going to keep it simple. Negligence. You're going to state jurisdiction. You're going to say on such and such date you were driving northbound on Eastern near Sahara in Las Vegas. Defendant did not stop at the red light and recklessly or negligently hit your car. As a result, you were physically injured, lost wages or income, sustained damage to the car suffered mental and physical pain, and incurred medical expenses of blank dollars. Therefore, you're going to demand judgment against the defendant for blank dollars plus cost. You're going to date and sign it. This is a negligence complaint. It is approved by the federal and state courts. This is all that you need. Rule 9 does require specificity, and here's where it's needed. If you're going to allege fraud or mistake, you're going to need greater detail like time, place, and manner of the fraud or mistake. If there's conditions precedent like exhausting administrative remedies, you have to state that in your complaint. And you must specify the time and place of the event you are complaining about, such as negligence in the previous example. Special damages are damages that have a definite amount like medical expenses, and they also need to be specified in your complaint. We are Nevada Legal Services. I will be back with part two of filing the complaint, but if you want free legal assistance, go to NevadaLegalServices.org and stay tuned for more lessons in the YouTube Law School.